Hello everyone, uh, this will be about DigiTact and how I think its LFO is broken. I created some test samples, uh, one's a 100 hertz uh, wave, one's uh, 1k and there's a 10k and there's uh, white noise. So we loaded them uh, to the machine, so it's time to load them into the project. Okay, to be able to show you how the LFO works, we need to look at the uh, spectrum analyzer. I've got one quite good uh, bundled with uh, the uh, sound card driver, so I'm going to use that, but you can use any old spectrum analyzer. I could just use uh, the uh, spectrum from live, that should be enough, so we get 100 hertz here, quite neat, and if I switch the sample to 1k, it's here, 1k, and here, 10k, and we've got some white noise. So far, so good. Let's see that again on uh, this analyzer. So there's 100 hertz, there's uh, 1k, 10k, and noise. Yeah. So if I uh, change the pitch, yeah, this is what I'm getting. This is this is all right. You can see the same here. Okay, let's just program something so it keeps playing. Uh, if I change the destination to tune, I start modulating, that's fine. I like how I like the way they did frequency. There's two nodes controlling the frequency. There's the multiplier and there's the, uh, the frequency itself. So that's really nice. I absolutely hate this one. I hate the, uh, the depth. It makes sense only on those tiniest amounts. It doesn't make any sense if you try to go further. Let's do something fast enough so we can see it and let's try to increase the modulation okay so you can see that I'm at what two o'clock and I'm already off the chart like it's clipping it doesn't really go much higher than let's throw this back yeah so it stops working at about five out of 64 go negative it's roughly the same at about minus five it starts to clip so that's just I can't believe it let's see what happens if I change the sample so now it clips from the low end let's see this again so that's square wave no modulation that's expected that's what we want and if we go higher, that's fine. And it stops at around 10. It's asymmetrical as well. It goes to the uh, exponential wave. Again does not go higher than 10. Let's see something else. Let's see the filter frequency. And for this, we got some uh, noise samples. So now we should be able to see where the filters are. So if I increase the resonance, so let me just reset this. So this is how you'd see a, a filter uh, on a spectrum analyzer. You can sort of see where the resonance is. So if I increase this, it's quite clear where uh, where we are. Okay, so let's see. We're happy with that. It's right in the middle of our hearing range, and we start to modulate it. At around three, I'm already covering quite a range. So on the filter, so the filter does not click, but the range is still insane. Check this out. We go from essentially from zero to the Nyquist limit at the value of 26. So I'm asking, why would you need this or this? It just wastes so much range on the machine. It's useless. If I want a square wave, I just I can just do a square wave. This, this goes from 50 hertz to 5k at the value of 17. So if you stop hearing the filter, 
at the value of 25. So why is this needed? But the main offender is obviously the, uh, the tune. So let, let's see it again. S sine wave. This is my sine wave. Sample tune modulation and depth on zero. And then 0.5, it's usable. One is pushing it. Five is of the maximum before it clips. But then it just goes nuts and it doesn't, it doesn't modulate anymore. So that was it. Hope it was fun. See you around.